all this talk, you know, um, I think Zoe said we were lucky to get Greta. She's on the cusp of stardom. How do you feel about that kind of buzz to have, like, quote, a hot career and, and to be called, you know, like the, the next big thing? It's, well, it's, it's tremendously exciting. I, I love movies and I love making movies and anything that allows me to keep doing that is um, pretty great. I, I mean, that being said, I, I don't like to believe anything that people say because I feel like that's kind of the kiss of death in Hollywood. If you start believing your own hype, then you're sunk. Um, but I, I mean, I love acting and I love um, making things and I, th I think that, that that's that's real. The rest of it is kind of all ephemera, and you can't really hang on to it. But um, but it's all very flattering. And was Lola an easy thing to say yes to once you read the screenplay? I mean, she's the center of the movie, yeah. and you, I must say you've never looked more beautiful oh, or been, you. you know, sort of sweeter, more neurotic, more irresistible, <laughs> or whatever. You should hang out with me every day. It feels good. Um, no, I, uh, it was very, actually, it was kind of funny. I met, I'm, I read the script, I liked it, and I met with them, and then there was this kind of delay in it where I, I didn't know right away, and, um, but then it, it's like, it's like the you know, Grouch remarks via Woody Allen, like, I never want to be part of a club that would have someone like me as a member. There was, like, a little bit when I got offered the part, I was like, why would they want me? Oh, no. <laughs> and then I got nervous because it, I felt kind of like I wasn't deserving or I was scared about it because you kind of, if you're going to be a lead in a movie like that, there's a part of yourself that you have to get over a feeling of, I'm not interesting. Why would someone want to watch me? And you have to think, no, I can do this. And um, the lead up to it was very nerve wracking, but the actually doing it was really fun and great. Like once I was doing it, it had a life of its own. But sitting in my room before it started it was just drive you batty. But um, but once it was going, it was just like this. I was like, it was like every day I was crying and laughing and running around New York and I was on every single day and it was like a six week shoot and it was just like it was like going into a submarine and you don't come out so I'm grateful I did it but I was very nervous I'm still kind of nervous about it. <laughs> how universal do you think Lola's story is well I think that it's I think that it's not necessarily universal in that every woman feels I need to be married by 30 but I do think that it is a universal for both genders that you 30 is a birthday where people take stock and I think people put a lot of emphasis on where are you at 30 and where did you think you were going to be and how does that match up with your reality and I think whether or not you think you should be married, there's a sense of I should be in a better job or I should own an apartment or I should be somewhere. And I think there's a lot of shoulds associated with 30. And Lola's shoulds are I should, I should be married. But I think there is like this panic that sets in in the very late 20s where people just, it's like they go through a second adolescence and they act out and they're inappropriate and it's the like last dying gasp of um being a kid in some ways and i but in and then it, and then once it happens i think there's a sense of oh why well, was i i'm still the same person but i think everyone has in their mind like i want to do this by 30 there's always some thing in your mind where you set a goal and then the deadline is by 30 don't, I'm not sure. Have you hit 29? <laughs> I haven't. I'm turning 29 um, later this year, and I'll, um, and then that'll be my last year of being in my 20s, and I'll do something stupid. <laughs> I, I always thought at that point in my life that nobody would really believe it when you said you were 29. They'd think, oh, you're really 30, but you just don't right. want to admit it. You right. Know? No, so I don't like mean, you just, that's true. Yeah, it's like you should just... When you're 28, you just start thinking you might as well be 30 because nobody's going to believe you're 29. I know. Well, I felt like I was. I I felt like I was 30 since I was like 18. I've always felt kind of old. I don't know why. I've just always felt like I was older than other people, and I and I've always had this 
sense of doom of getting older, but I um it's actually I in a way I feel like I'm catching up to where I've mentally been my whole life. So I don't feel like I feel like once I hit thirty I'll finally be on track with um, the age I have been internally <laughs> for a long time. So uh, Lola says at one point I keep having sex with the wrong guys at the wrong time. Yeah. Um can you talk about that as being a universal kind of experience yeah. for a lot of a lot of people to feel like why did I do that and or yeah. why didn't I do that? I think um it's it's really kind of an existential crisis to be a single woman in you know the 2000s because it's not I mean especially in New York City there's not the structure of um you know, religion or that you're married, but that you're married before you have sex and there's not this feeling and there's, and we're also not in the midst of a sexual revolution. So it's sort of like a, it's like you choose your own adventure. And I think that there's a lot of just like, should I be doing this? Should I be having sex with lots of people or should I not be? I don't. And I think that there's kind of like a, however you choose to live your life is fine. But that creates a lot of anxiety because it creates this sense of choice and nobody is telling you what you should be doing. And it's much easier to live when someone's saying, no, you should only do this or you should definitely be with lots of people. Or, um, and I think Lola has some of this anxiety of uh, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. And did you see any parallels in your own life to the character of Lola? Yeah, I mean, I think in a funny way, I live more, I have more of a... I live with uncertainty m much more than Lola does because my life is actually always kind of up in the air and kind of a mess in a way because as an actor there's no certainty and I'm always hoping there's <laughs> going to be certainty. And Lola is a character who has never faced uncertainty, that she's lived her whole life thinking, I'm going to get married to this guy, we've been together for eight years, this is just what's going to happen, and that this is really the first true crisis she's had in her life and I feel like I've been in crisis mode for like the last 10 years so I, I actually in some ways had to build more of the person who would be horrified if everything went awry like when things go awry in my life it feels normal but um but so I think but I, I very much related to the part where it was like everything's a mess <laughs> what did you um think about the ending how did you figure out what was going on with your character well, um, I loved the ending. I, I really loved, um, when I read it, I really thought that was amazing that they ended it like that, that she didn't end up having a Prince Charming, and that she said, y you know what, that's actually not what I need right now. And I, it, I, I, I you know, part of what I did in the movie was that I gave the feelings I had of fear and trepidation or anxiety or panic, I didn't really try to fight those because they were very useful to me in being Lola because I could have that frenetic kind of energy where it feels like you just want to eat everything in a room and then like, you know, throw up and do it again or something that it's got that kind of like, ha, ah, you know. And so I, um, I towards the end when she, where she gets to I tried to just really tap into the part of myself that I think I have and we all have that's okay and that's got an inherent that has an inherent calm 